and now we're recording all right hello 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 and welcome to the cult of personality podcast i'm your host mike mcchapa with me today is kids with drugs happy mikey monday morning how are you today man i'm, I'm chilling how how's everything how's life been for you life for me has been okay very uneventful it's just week to week literally this is my excuse to get dressed up so here i am and that's that you know overall enjoying well it's tuesday today but when this drops is monday so enjoying my monday very very thirsty as well whenever i'm recording i'm always extremely thirsty uh, you gotta keep your water with you bro you gotta stay hydrated stay hydrated fact. exactly what you been up to i've been chilling i've been working um working on art you can see on the back there um i've been really uh like working in in person you know like at this cafe it's been it's been an experience for sure but uh what's it called yeah i've i've also been working on music music something that i'm excited about you know i'm I usually started this like art stuff with like drawings and like this like uh story that I'm kind of trying to create. Okay. But um, you know, I decided to venture off into music, and it's been it's been a fun fun little journey of mine. It's a fun, yeah. interesting journey indeed. Music is always fun. I'm very excited to talk to you because not only do, are you an artist in the sense of music, like most of my prior guests but you're also an artist in the sense of like art like on a canvas which oh yeah i don't know any artists so that's very <laughs> exciting let me make sure my mic is not too loud there we go very exciting to talk about and converse about and get to know about because i don't know shit about art i think i went to like an art museum maybe once like three years ago yes yeah. as far as i go when it comes to that mm. i mean I don't know. I, I've I've met a lot of artists and like a lot more of the, most artists, uh, they're very in like in intertwined with their artist community. But for me, I just like live under my own rock, like like on some Patrick Star shit, bro. Like <laughs> it's, that's the like, same shit with me and like music. I feel you. Yeah. So they're like, you ever heard of this guy, blah blah? blah. And it's just like, bro, who? Like I'm like not even to like disrespect. It's just like no, I just I don't know anybody type shit you know but it's uh it's cool to like finally start to like you know bring everything that I've learned from like my own stuff into like this community that I've been like openly accepted to into and that's like how the dope I really fuck with that. I completely relate to you just everything with like art and more like so like music like I've been in my own realm for the last two years until I started this podcast and now people are like hey have you heard of this person interview this person I'm like who and again, not on any disrespectful shit. It's kind of just like, I'm so fucking clueless. Yeah. But it, that gives us time, I feel like, to build up our, uh, what's the word? Our, our our work of arts and then present them when we feel ready. And now uh, here we are presenting them. Everybody was in like this cocoon stage and now they're like, it's finally like, like here presenting this shit to the world and it's, everybody's doing it at the same time and it's crazy like like I don't even want to get started on like hippie talk but like bro divine all... divine timing yes bro it's connected in so many ways and it's crazy beautiful bro like mm. I love it so much I truly believe everything is interconnected so when I see parallels with timing especially in a bunch of people's lives and shit I'm like oh shit like this is some crazy this like is, this is something that's like happening there's gonna be a moment in history yeah. bro. Like, like yeah like I don't even I don't even know how to explain it but like I feel like right now is our like 2016 cultivating era for like in a couple of years everybody's gonna be like some like crazy like, godly level shit bro it's I'm I've so been excited. thinking the same thing. I'm like, yo, everyone really reminisced on 2016 a lot. And I'm like, we're having this resurgence, I feel like, in our little, like, bubble, our little, like, circle we got going on. And I'm like, what if we are, like, the second coming of that wave and we got, like, our whole shit bro. going on? Because I feel like there's an optimistic and very pessimistic way of looking at it. Some people are like, we're never going to get 2016 back. We're never going to have that wave back. Fuck it. Ah, bah, 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 bah. SoundCloud sucks. And then you have people who are like, yo, let's bring it back. Let's make another fucking wave. And I believe that we truly can do it. We have so many talented people. For real, bro. Like, we got, 
we got infinity we got bro so many people like i don't i can't even name all of them and i don't want to name all of them because if i miss out on somebody i gonna feel hella bad but like all these people that i've listened to like i listen to these people on a daily bro and it's like jesus like everybody is so talented like your music bro like that shit is like oh like i love this shit like so much thank you so much it no, feels yeah. so good to like listen to like music that isn't like mainstream or like like big artists like people that like you can actually connect with yeah like, relate to really, like, yeah that's just beautiful and another beautiful thing about like underground like the whole scene of it whether it's music or everything around it is like it's just very raw it's very authentic it's very gritty it's very like sh- real life it's not like red carpets and suits and high yeah. budget it's like i'm working with like pennies in my pocket motherfucker like <laughs> yeah everybody's going through it bro it's just like it's it's like it makes you feel less alone too like it's it's so it's so like like you said it's real like i i wish i could put it into words but it's just like you is this is like one of those like years where it's like you had to be there to witness it happen type shit like this is oh like i don't know maybe i'm like i just overly excited about it all but like i i genuinely see it i see it like the uh, vision i see the vision i see everything that's ha- that's gonna happen it's beautiful bro i get very excited but sometimes i also get very scared because i'm like what if i'm super excited about all this shit and i'm just fucking delusional and like overhyping all of it but yet again that's exactly your mind takes you where you want to be so if i fall into exactly, that train of bro. thought i'm gonna fall but if i keep my hopes up and i'm like yo this is something that's becoming something shit's parallels and everything's moving together we're good and I'm very much about community and about teamwork and about everyone supporting each other. Hell yeah, bro. We all got to uplift each other because everybody has those same exact thoughts. And it's like, dude, if we all, if, imagine we all at some point, like, like awesome divine timing, but in like the bad ending kind of way, all decide like, oh yeah, we're all just delusional. And then like none of this ever happens. Yeah. But this all if gets we decide wiped. to be like, fuck it, we are all delusional. We crazy out here, you know? you fucking accept it and then like that's where you get to some place bro it's like it becomes reality that. like exactly. reality reality yeah exactly i mean it's already reality we're living we're here we're breathing we're here bro we out here i'm very very excited for this because you and i i was just saying before i started recording that we know very little about each other we've only talked in dm a couple times besides yeah. that and i've had my first three guests have been close friends of mine for like two years now if not three so this is cool. This is the first. This is someone I'm having someone I don't know. So we take it a little slower, but it's going to be dope. It's going to be great. Kids with drugs, we're here. We're going to learn you. We're going to, we're going to, oh, yeah. we're going to dissect you. No, I'm kidding. But overall, <laughs> very, very, very excited. And my friend Fiji, Miss Cam, Miss Fiji, she was the one that was like, yo, have kids with drugs on there. I was like, <laughs> your own. I had before that I had seen, um, your art like your visual art on canvas and i was like holy shit like this is really fucking good like and i don't have any fucking uh what's the word qualifications to judge art so i look at anything and i'm like this is amazing but like with you it's like this is some shit like you would see somewhere important i i would assume like somewhere like a museum or fucking you know like or like one of those like um like murals you see like you ever like walk in the street and you see like big ass murals and you're like holy shit who the fuck did this like some really artsy different shit (laughs) yes sir so before we get into the main question the first question which is usually like oh the vibe the energy the aura i wanted to ask you because i was a little curious where are you from yo i'm from new york city um we out here you know (laughs) that's exactly why because i was doing a little bit of my stalking lurking educating because you know i like to take a look at my guests before i have them on even if i know them like i was looking at your music where you're from blah blah so that's cool because I'm from New York City. I'm from the Bronx, and I moved, I moved up. Oh, I moved upstate an hour, so I'm still relatively close. I'm out there. My girl lives in Brooklyn, so I'm out there pretty often. But I want to know where are you from? How was your upbringing out there? Something we can start off on a solid foundation. I so I'm from Queens, or the I'm from both boroughs, Brooklyn and Queens. Um, shout out queens i i'm in like a limbo state right now but yeah shout out queens um but uh yeah my upbringing man i just i don't know i've always wanted to like 
do something that like I don't want to live a normal life and I want to like create something that just like doesn't make sense to anybody unless you like get equally as lost in it as I do and like I've um I'm not I was never like really in this to like get uh popular or or like any of that I generally just like if you find it do as you wish type thing you know like um with my art especially like there's still like a lot of symbolism and like shit that it'll, that it'll like teach you on some like spiritual shit or like we could say a cult but I don't I don't like claiming that um yeah but uh yeah and like it's a it's a weird weird thing to like talk about especially like in a public like setting like or like not even public I mean Instagram you know social media and stuff and like um having all this stuff out there and like like recorded is like very vulnerable but it, it's also like a like as my art gets created I am being created you know like I create myself with my art um because I haven't like fully figured out who the fuck I am you know and like I just there's so much shit and um yeah I kind of just started rambling there for a second but no completely fine I'm really into it because I can relate (laughs) to a lot of what you're saying completely like I I always have to like carry this like I come as I am uh like quality of me I guess like like that's why I'll come off as like sometimes I'll come off as like hella chaotic or like you know just like I just like overwhelming at some points or like sometimes I'll be like quiet and shit but it's like either way I'm I can't like lie or like project this like person that I'm not like um or like an image that like you know how when you grow up like there's like you have like your family you have like either relationships or stuff like that that they all project this like ideal image of you and you're like fuck I'm not that person and then you could either be like damn I'm not that person oh or you could be like I'm not that person I am me you know because you separate yourself from the two of them you're just yourself you know and that's that's who I'm trying to be I'm trying to be as me as possible and like whether that comes with with like showing off like purple demons or like angels you know like all this stuff like it's all symbolism for like stuff that like is just I hate boiling it down but like you know like so I won't I won't boil it down you You can leave it up to interpretation you know yeah exactly but you learn as you go exactly however I am so fucking glad you said what you said because in my personal life I am very much not having trouble necessarily because I'm very much raw I'm very much me I'm very much Michael you know or Mikey or whoever the fuck but it's been a very big thing in my head because I like to overthink the shit out of everything about perception like how people perceive me and it's like some people perceive me this way some people perceive me that way but at the end of the day like you're right I am me and I really find that dope that you mirror that into your art. I mean, I think we all do in a sense, but with that being said, like you articulated it so fucking well. And I'm like, I'm like, holy shit. Like you just said everything that I've thought for so many years. And I know both of us coming from the city. I don't know if you ever felt it, but the Bronx is very much like a one, like you're either with the culture or you're you're not. Yes, bro. And sometimes the culture is very much corny or just very much they're all riding the same wave like sheep so to be different is to almost be like a fucking joke to them at least yeah it it takes courage I feel like it takes a lot of courage for real like it's crazy though because like in high school a lot of these a lot of these people used to be like bro it was either you were you were with the the black kids or the hispanic kids or like that limbo in between kids that just like don't really talk to anyone everything was like clicked up yeah exactly and it's and like it was just crazy like I, I couldn't fit into either one and like at that moment I like that was like one of like real like key turning points in like my childhood where it's just like all right this is like the universe telling you like just be you man like just be you type shit you know like you can't you can't be anything else like that ass like 
you like the more you you'll try to like be something else the the less you are of it if that makes sense yeah but completely. the more you try to be of yourself like the more you are of like what you dream of you know type shit and yeah like i don't know high school just like really taught me that was like the, the moment where I, I really like solidified that mentality for me and then like going out and then uh afterwards the the, the the new york music scene right now with all peace and love to anybody who watches this from this community but also fuck you guys y'all are um, killing the fucking kids yo y'all are indicting the kids killing the kids yo drill music the, the, uh, whole, the whole scene the whole culture like you know I, I love that people are expressing and you know whatever it's good to express it's good to make art it's good to create but we are, I don't know, like, I was talking about it the other day. I was on the game, and I was talking to whoever, and I was like, dude, this shit's like, I have little cousins looking up to people with, like, charges and murders and shit, and I'm like, I don't know how I feel about it, but continue on. Dog, I don't even mean, like, drone music. I mean, like, whatever punk, like, electronic punk fucking, like, scene is going on right now, this shit is, like, bro, like, <sighs> Hold I hope I don't even take this for saying minute. this shit, but like, it, ooh, too many grown men there with like young kids, bro. It's just fucking. Ooh. I don't fuck with. I don't fuck with the New York scene at all. Like, if I could, bro, I would dead ass leave New York, just New like York, in an art from like my artistic shit, you know. The New York indie scene, full of pedos, is what I'm hearing. Full of pedos, bro. Full of pedos. Mm. No it's bueno. Just very very artificial scene like whatever whatever is going on where all these people from different states are connecting and com and making this like community that we're that we're creating that we are creating yeah you guys like everybody that i spoke to has been a real ass motherfucker but out here in new york is just like it, it's very it's still very clicked up high school mentality just like with music people it's just like I can't fuck with that. I just can't like I'm in like a like my my soul. I just don't like just like something inside of me just like repels from from it. And it's not even just like like okay, there's the pedophile shit and like that, that's like one reason. But then there's like so many other reasons why I just like something there is just not spiritually right in my opinion. A hundred and ten percent agreed. Um, you know. I don't know. With peace and love, though, to everybody there. I hope everybody, because every, everybody is still learning, you know, yeah. and like they're they're fucking kids still. And there's you know? and there's exceptions too as well. Like for sure, me, because with me coming up and developing as an artist and as a human being, and I got taken out of the city at the ripe age of fourteen. So I went to high school up here. Uh, it's a very much it's very much different. Like there's the one there's there's not too many of like. Hmm. it's clicky but in a whole different way like you know like high school movies like fucking i'm trying to think of like one what 10 things i hate about you or some shit something like that <laughs> it's like oh jocks the goss the dorks the blah, yeah. the blah it's like that up here and i was like i don't fit in with any of these people and then that really made me embrace just being me without a label and avoiding a label yeah. completely because labels will fuck you up in your whole like identity at that age like i've seen so many people trying to be what they weren't and shit but as an artist that also created, I think, a sense of, uh, what's the word? I guess being visualism. Yeah. And like being versatile and not being, not sticking to one thing because you were avoiding labels all this time, your whole life. So it's like type shit. Yeah. A hundred percent, bro. It's like, like you, you, you keep it. And it's not even like you just like miraculously just like, you know, like switch, flip the switch, and you're like, all right, no more labels. It's more so like you get, you gotta like experience these things. You gotta dead ass go where you don't want to be to figure out that that's not where you want to be. You know, type shit. And like, it's just like a whole like life is crazy, bro. Like learning shit. Like people, cause people could dead ass tell you, bro. Like I'm pretty sure people have told you all your life, or like you've seen it in cartoon shows where like just be yourself, haha. <laughs> you know, type shit. Yeah. But like you don't do that shit because like you're learning you're like but I'm, i want to be like everybody else but i'm like you realize that that shit is just like not working and then like that ass life is just living to forget to remember to forget to remember and remember each time a little more bro that shit's like 
it's fucking yeah life is weird it's beautiful though life is weird and life is beautiful it's a lot for me at least it's been a lot of uh hold on i got a burp wow that was gross anyway a lot of internal conflicts when it comes to like lessons and stuff and i try to be very self-aware and i'm always thinking so it causes me to like analyze everything as it's happening rather than like it just happening and me looking in retrospect yeah with that being said like yeah no i completely get you it's like i've learned the same lesson over and over again and i just learn more about it each time and it's caused me to be where i am at this point now not to get all philosophical on a podcast about music and art but i think they coincide very closely actually but uh, philosophy is art it's with itself like mm -hmm. shit like i don't know if any everybody that's listening right now bro like i am a very philosophical and i was i said hippie talk like like 15 minutes ago but this is what i mean by hippie talk i just start getting hella philosophical and thinking talking about life and shit but like if you're listening this might be like most of the things i say and like if that's not your thing that's okay but you can always come back and listen when you're ready to learn the cool thing about this type of conversation though is not even because i feel like i guess everything has a demographic and i guess the demographic for this podcast would be more so musicians producers artists whatever the fuck however philosophy and the uh, interpretation perceiving life itself is fucking universal there is no yeah. demographic for it so anyone listening can relate to this right now and probably be like yeah they're speaking, so. they're speaking fucking so. facts yeah <laughs> but seeing how that infuses into your art and to all of our art as you know musicians and artists and whatever the fuck we are is really interesting and really cool and i think about it all the time i'm like oh well how do my politics factor into my music and how do my social views fucking go into my music how did me developing as whatever fucking whatever happened to me as this time at this time how does it affect now how does it affect the music the podcast how i dress how i do this how i talk ga, 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 ga. very much very much i think about it all but um it's cool that you and I both learned to be individuals in environments where it's not encouraged at all. Yeah, I think it's it's a very gritty thing to do. Like it's it, you're you're going against like the the grain and like it does build up tough skin though. Like I would say, and that's like one of the like the beautiful things that I appreciate about like all the like negative aspects of like learning, like all of this like. You know, like the pain that that comes with learning to be yourself by yourself, you know, that shit like makes you like your pain tolerance a lot stronger, making you a strong ass person, you know, and that's like something that I always try to like, you know, because I get in my head too all the time and like all this philosophy shit like I say philosophy and I also sound hella, I feel like I sounded hella egotistical a couple minutes ago, but um, shit, like I just life I just think about it too much at some points and like damn I forgot where I was going with this I kind of just it's damn. fine and to be honest I don't see any egotistical in you actually I see you as very down to earth and very humble oh no, thank you which is cool because you know perception is weird we perceive ourselves completely different than the world takes us in which is you know the fun thing of being human and being alive right yeah <laughs> but I found interest in you the minute I start because I started doing my research uh, probably like around eight o'clock in the morning today. I mean, like I looked at you already because whatever we, we have each other on social. But like today I took a deep dive. I was like, all right, let's look into kids with drugs because, you know, I have a podcast with him today. Let's do it. And I was very intrigued. I'm like, OK, this is someone I feel like I can relate to. We're both from a similar area, both similar styles in some sort of way. So, and I was just only assuming we'd probably have similar views looking into things, which is great. This is fucking amazing. It's not often, even within our community, that you find people like you. Because people differ. Oh, thank They're, you. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> people differ. Everyone's different and whatever. And I mean, I guess I perceive myself as humble. So, like, thinking that we'd probably have some parallels, I was like, this guy seems like a down-to-earth, really chill artsy original dude and that's exactly what you've come to be it came to fruition in my head to now so going back into the questionnaire structure kids with drugs the name the image the aura the oh energy. yeah where did we start how did we get here all of the above abc one two three all right so the name kids with drugs i'll start with that so it's not 
I'm not trying to condone drug use. I actually think doing drugs, besides smoking weed and psychedelics, like, you know, just don't do all that other shit. That's just, just don't do it, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I understand, like, why. And that's, and I'll get into it in a bit. But, like, I don't condone drug use. I, kids with drugs is more so, this is what I grew up with as a child, like, my entire life. Like, drugs around being a child, like, me being a kid, with drugs you know literally and like my friends doing the same things and like i've like I'm just like trying to document like how ugly life can get with these things but also like the beauty of it all like um like i've seen like how my friends have like and myself too like we've all gotten kind of like lost and like 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 the spinning like this like like life is like this car like they just spun out of control type thing and like like i'm witnessing everybody else in this like same kind of car because everybody's kind of going through the same thing and like i also see like everybody inside those like like metaphorical cars i guess like having their good ass time you know like they're, they're they don't they don't see that the car is like kind of like spinning out of control they're just like yo like, blah, 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 you know this is great blah blah, blah. but like it's all it could all like like go either bad or good or this like life is just like a risk you know right like like it's inevitable like anything could happen at any given moment everything is uncertain and you know especially with like drug use like that's like fucked and like 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 it's just like it's very dark to like it can talk go, about it can go off the rails very very quick but you could also like with, with like psychedelics and like like weed you like you know how like you, you're like arguing with somebody you know if you just like you're like yo you're trying to smoke right now and talk about this they're gonna smoke with you and then by the end of the smoke they're not gonna be fighting with you they're just, you're gonna be homies with them right yeah like then then with psychedelics like you you know always in moderation and like like you gotta learn how to like respect drugs and stuff but like psychedelics really teach you so many things about like like empathy like to like an extent like where it kind of makes you feel like your past also was like it was like a sociopath type shit like you know it's crazy like and like this is the spiritual sense of it like how much more real it makes real life um that shit is um it's life-changing so that's that's why it's like you know all these substances that i have grown up with have like led me to this point where i'm talking to you about kids doing drugs you know which is i think a very good message to spread and also like a very very what's the word mature thing of you to take something that you were exposed to early on and we i think i've had i have things of my own that let's take the same shit same things we have been exposed to early on and using it almost as not necessarily a lesson because we're not necessarily on a pedestal as humans to teach lessons. oh no for sure no yeah 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 but you know just kind of make uh what's the word a positive message out of it i used to be um i used to be straight edge for a time being because i was so against like drugs and shit but it got so militant and it's so fucking hardcore and i was like eh, sometimes i just want to smoke so i refrained from being straight edge but i completely understand like wanting to uh make that message aware because there's a lot of people people i went to high school with people i know now people who are grown-ass people in my family who are kind of like absorbed by whatever the fuck their poison is you know yeah and i think everything in moderation everything responsibly and you know being aware which is i i took some of that from your message and how you fucking intertwine it to your name which is your name people how people perceive you it's right smack in the middle smack there for everyone to see yeah but i mean i kind of the thing about that name is that like every time that i tell it to somebody they're like, oh my God, you, you, why did you choose to say it, to name yourself kids with drugs? Like, that's like, you know, it's like so controversial, blah, blah, blah. But like, I kind of want to change my name to Little Echoes, not L I L Echoes, like Little, like L I T T L E yeah. Echoes. Yeah. Um, cause again, it goes with like the same story of kids with drugs, but this time instead of it being like, I mean, it's the same concept, but instead of it talking about drugs, it's everything else. Like, everybody's story just echoes through space. So, little echoes, because, like, we're all, like, you know, like, the universe is, like, ginormous, and we're just, like, these, like, 
tiny grains of sand little inside peons of it. yeah exactly so like we're just the small echoes to like everything else that's echoing you know it's like fractaling and like i don't know if that that if you could like visualize that in your head but like it's it's a uh, yeah that's little echoes um i imagine like a um fuck what how do fucking some animals they speak or they hear through echoes and like i don't know like that's, that's yeah or like fucking i think beluga whales I think yes. echo, echo location that's it there you go and that's what i imagine yeah. in my head <laughs> dude yeah i have i also have dmt shoddy and um what was the other one indigo indigo is like recently like some people have started calling me indigo um and i i kind of fuck with that name um but uh what's it called yeah i got dmt shoddy little echoes and indigo <laughs> the cool thing with that too is like as artists we are not stuck to necessarily one name there's people with alter egos like i don't know if yeah. you're in the bones but he has surrender dorothy there's fucking, yes my you fucking 20 has hamish you know all these people have different alter egos so it'd be cool if we saw a kids with drugs alter ego where we see more I don't know, necessarily not even like a different style, but just, you know, a different image, different exposure. You don't know where it could go. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's like, that's my alter egos would be the artist, like, you know, like canvas artist, and then there's yeah. the, the musician, and then there's um the magician, I guess. I don't know, like on some like spiritual shit, but like that one I still haven't figured out yet. So like, you know um is, is there any other endeavors that you work are you plan on if not you're already working towards when it comes to like besides music and besides like canvas art yeah um tattooing oh okay tattooing and um what's it called also i i want to study like uh psychology and um i get more like know how to help people more you know because like I would like the next generation to not have to go through psychedelic use and then have like, you know, uh, really edgy and uh, like not, hmm, I don't know how to explain it without like feeling like I'm judging people, but like everybody's allowed to do whatever the fuck they want. Like, I'm not saying that I'm the, you know, all high and mighty, like I'm not God, bro. I'm, I'm both equal. Like I'm, I'm like Lil Darky said in Trap Metal, this song, bro. He was like, I am between Jesus Christ and the devil. Like, I'm right in between. Like, that's the human experience for everyone, you know? Yeah. You could do as you fucking wish, you know? And, but for me and my personal like, experiences with, like, spiritual shit, I've just learned that, like, a lot of these, like, negative entity beings will, like, you know, like, just, like, like taking psychedelics and, like, like surrounding yourself with like negativity just doesn't like it's not a good idea right it's not a good mix it doesn't and, like, mesh well yeah and especially with like certain circles and like certain certain groups of people and like it's just you know like i don't know something just that needs to be like respected and like because like i've seen so many bad things happen and so many people like 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 so many situations and like traumatic events that like you know, like, could have been avoided, but, like, because we're all innocent and we don't know any better, you know, they happen. Like, right, that's right. shit that, like, I would like to be able to, like, in a professional sense, like, if I'm thinking, like, therapist or, like, like any 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 career path like that, like, um, you know, I would like to help people in that sense, like, you know, on a spiritual level, because I feel like taking care of the psyche isn't the only thing to curing, like, the issues that you have going on inside it's like both soul and spirit mind body and spirit but you know i'm a fucking I'm, i got noodle arms bro <laughs> bro literally <laughs> same yeah it's like i cannot be i could not be a physical trainer but uh you know maybe i could get there one day but don't ever limit but yeah i feel you i'm the exact same way you know how many times i try working out and like taking care of my body because it's like recommended and i'm like i can't do this i do it for a month at most but retro going back to what you were saying um no yeah i mean i believe everything that happens is fate in this life you know good and bad everything is fate however with that being said things happening to you and this generation that we are in is also fate to avoid it happening for the next generation so 
uh, I don't know what happened for the last couple of generations, like baby boomers and shit, because they kind of like gave us a really fucked up world, not to like hate or judge or anything, but like we're so industrialized and straying so far away from what we were meant to be, in my opinion. Yeah. So, but however, I guess it's better late than never. And now our generation is very socially aware, I feel like, and very spiritually aware. And everything you said, I feel like a lot of people can understand compared to like 50 years ago. Yeah, I mean, as you said that, I kind of just, like, realized that, like, shit, it's fucking life, bro. Pain is necessary. So, like, right. all, like it, it is fate because, like, dude, like, dude, that's fucking trippy. But, like, you know, it's every, mm, damn, like, everybody's just, everybody's going through things because it's meant to mold them into the people that they are. And we're all experiencing the same things in life differently and it's maybe that sounds insensitive to say because everybody's like nobody's pain is the same amount or some people have, will definitely be going through worse and some people will definitely be going through less but it's good to stay away that everybody is still going through shit and like you know like chrono sonder if you know what that means like everybody's like the main character right everybody right. like you know and everybody has their own plot and but it's like the same plot because you know we all like grow up and you know get old and die because right it's like, it but, all runs along the similar guidelines of sorts even though they may vary and stray away yeah. from each other yeah but um what was i going to say to that i had a very good point to make to that and i completely just lost it it'll come back uh because we we're talking about fate see this is why it's unscripted uncut uncensored and now michael has a brain fart uh holy shit what was i gonna say oh i was gonna ask you if you necessarily believe in past lives and them affecting us when it comes to like our lives now because some people would believe and i've read into it or i've even thought about it like depending on what you did in your past life affects you know what you go through like lesson wise what you go through trauma wise pain wise in this life so like and some people believe maybe it's even the opposite effect like um which I mean can come off maybe offensive or insensitive even to some, but some people believe like, oh, in your past life, if you were like a fucking rageous, raging fucking racist or a raging homophobe or a raging something, something, you know, one way or even the opposite, like the exact opposite, you might come out the next life being the exact opposite. Like, oh, you were racist. Now you're a minority. Oh, you were homophobic. Now you're gay. Like, which, you know, there's no fucking sturdiness or, like, fact to it. It's just, like, something people would speculate. And I was wondering, like, your thoughts on that since we're in this conversation of, like, what people go through and fate and <laughs> shit like that. I feel like it's it's a mix of both, bro. Like, I, I think our past lives isn't, like, somebody. It's not, like, it's somebody you don't know. It's somebody you would still know and you're, like, like, your father, you know? Like, we yeah, carry yeah. their burdens onto us. And we still come out different, you know, like, I got, my father is a fucking, like, homophobe, but I'm, I think I'm non-binary, bro, so, like, you know, it's, um, it, it's, like, like you said, like, it's, 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 it's karmic fate, and, like, all these, all these things intertwining into one thing, and, like, you know, this is, I'll put my mic down, this is them, and then you carry on to them, and then you carry on to them, you carry on to them, and that's, that's, that soul that one particular soul's legacy going on but it's not like it's it's something that that like like that happened like in a negative sense it's more so like that's that soul evolving and changing into something better you know like for example like are your parents as like open-minded as would you say your parents are more open-minded as open-minded as you I was going to get into this. Uh, my mother makes an attempt, a very good attempt. And I respect my mother a lot for making the attempt, but there's some things that she just will never understand that I pick up like that. Like exactly. Personally, and then there will be things, you know, you go ahead, you go ahead. Oh, personally, what I was going to say is like, for example, you, you touched on gender and gender is a big fucking array, right? It's not linear, but if I had to make it linear for the sake of this fucking visualization, I very much find myself between like, I guess like a guy in like the middle like I find myself yeah, in that space like I don't find myself completely a man because I feel a lot of femininity within me and that's probably because of my upbringing because mainly it was my mom who raised me sir same and there's just 
my mom sometimes just won't understand it. She's like, either you're just one or the other. Like, I don't know. I don't get why there's a middle ground. Everyone wants to identify something. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Whatever. I don't expect you to get it. However, uh, my father, I can't really speak on his insight. My stepfather, however, is mm, not open at all. Let's just keep it at that, right? Yes. So, and, so I said we're in the same boat when it comes to that. Yeah, it's like I constantly find myself in a state of trying to educate them on new, new concepts. And so, yeah, I completely understand like the whole point you were making of like, you know, it's kind of like a uh, opener, opener type thing, or depending on whatever the concept we're talking about is, it doesn't have to be gender, it could be talking about social issues like race and shit. Yeah, literally anything. It's like yeah. one door opens two more doors and then those doors open four yeah, it doors. It spreads out. Yeah. It's each generation going in and like, you know, expanding, expanding consciousness, bro. It's, you know, that's, that's what it is. Right. You know, you're becoming more self-aware and like just and learning. I, I think personally, like people in our age range and shit have made a tremendous progress with that because think about it, two generations ago, three generations ago, like dude, three to four generations ago, schools were segregated. Can you fucking believe that? You look at today and we're like a lot of people within our age range would be like, you know, open to everything, gender, race, blah, 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 which is great. I feel like we're coming so far and it makes me very hopeful for the future because I feel like a lot of people fall into pessimism. Ah, people, humans are so stupid. I'm like, well, better late than never when it comes to that. Well, I mean, see, maybe it's the pessimist inside of me, but I... I mean, there's a lot of fixing up we still have to do as humans. Dude, no, like what we're doing to our planet is what oh. kind of scares me like every day. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fucking ice caps are melting. The fucking animals are dying. You know, we have grizzly and growler bears now because of global warming. We have grizzly and polar bears mating because the polar bears have to go farther out from the ice into the woods to get food. At the fuck? It, right and that's like the thing that that's a point like it's i guess it sounds silly but it's a point i always bring up to like yo we're really fucking changing shit like that's like technically evolution of sorts and it's yeah. happening in front of our very eyes because you motherfuckers want to industrialize everything and i can go on a whole rant about how much i hate cars and the oil industry and gas and all that shit that's fucking polluting i'm like why don't we have more trains why don't we have more fucking buses so we can save the fucking dude man it's, it's it's fucking terrifying because like i mean but in a sense it kind of makes me want to live life like to the fullest because if the world is fucking gonna like fucking like boil or like fucking like melt or like whatever is gonna like happen where the world is like some sort of like either economic collapse so, some sort of natural like disaster that's made because of all this like pol- polluting and like global warming stuff you know like whatever happens like I just want to live my life to the fullest. And if nothing happens, I'm still living my life to the fullest, you know, like that's, that's like what, what I want to do. But, um, dude, I fucking, it's, it does, it does scare me every day though, because like we can, if damn, like if we don't fix shit, like what are we going to bring our like future generation into, you know, like that's like morally, like that's some like hard place to put yourself morally. That's why a lot, like less and less people are having kids with each generation as well. Like a lot of people are like, this planet is so fucking blech right now. Like I'm not bringing my kid into this, whether it's economically, politically, fucking environmentally, blah, blah, blah. blah. And yeah. so I, I can't even be mad at them at that. I mean, personally, like in my life, I would love to have kids. However, mm, sometimes I just look at, you look at the TV, you look at fucking articles and you're just like, what the fuck are we doing? However, Dude. I do have a little bit of hope because there's people like you and I who they don't want to be artists. They don't want to be musicians. They don't want to be, well, they want to be like government officials and shit and like people of power. I mean, that's a touchy subject. Cause we know the CIA and the FBI be doing their little, like little, <laughs> they be doing their little runs and they be taking out people who need to be taken out or whatever. Um, with that being said, it's like, so hopefully there are people of power that can make an, a change in the future, but we are in a system that's built off of which rich white old men, and they're going to have it their way or the highway. So they don't care about the environment. They don't care about mostly, they don't care about the people of color. They don't care about who's poor and who's rich as long as they're rich, you know? Yeah. 
even if it fucking leaves the planet dying where at that point your money means nothing but they don't care because they're on their way out anyway they're like fucking 70 80 years old fucking whatever the fuck they do i could go on a rant all day about the government about how they're running shit about how they're destroying the planet and not only america but like there's a bunch of the ccp bro yeah literally like all these fucking countries just fucking up humanity fucking up the environment like I can't even process that in 2022, we still have people in cages, whether we're talking about, you know, the border in America, or we still have, you know, the Chinese concentration camps apparently as well, which I'm yeah, not, the Uyghur, Uyghur camps. which I'm not the most educated on. I won't talk on it too heavy, but you know, it's like a crazy concept that we still have that going on in today's, uh, in today's society. Dude, it's, uh, it's, it's it's crazy how history just doesn't stop repeating itself, you know, like each couple of, like either seven, not even like hundred years, bro. It's every like 70 years type shit. Like this shit is just, I don't know. Yeah. I could go on all, all day about this stuff too, but it's going to get hella dark. And <laughs> yeah. Have you noticed though that every century in the twenties, we have some sort of pandemic or flu. Yeah, we had COVID this year. In the 1920s, we had, I think, uh, Spanish. I want the Spanish flu. I think the plague took place in the 20s of whatever century that was. Shit like that. And it's just like, shit is a continuous loop and people need to catch on to the fucking patterns. I don't necessarily know if we can break the loop or break the cycles, but, you know, it's worth a fucking try. Divine timing, bro. I feel like that's just the universe, like... Or not the universe or God or whatever, like you believe in just being like, all right, like Thanos snap finger snap, you know? Like, yeah. Kind of has to happen. But yeah, also like again, it goes back to everything being fate and everything being lessons almost to humanity and you know, this very human experience. Everything's a lesson, everything's a, a loop, everything, you know, until we get in our fucking skulls. But um, what was I gonna say? I think a very good point to bring that into or not to like, hmm, we're going to bring it back to loops and cycles and stuff because we were talking about it with the music scene and then we brought all the way back to like life in general. I want to bring it back down to like our conversation we had earlier, like of music and art and having a resurgence almost when it comes to like loops. Like, you know, we had 2016 and then people could talk about the 90s and people could talk about the 80s and people could talk about how great they were. And does do you feel like we're going to have like, another resurgence of like a lot like a golden age of music because i feel like in today's society everything is so media controlled you know like they say oh fucking video killed the radio star type you know that's a song yeah and with things like the grammys things like the oscars look at all the controversy in the news you know i think everything's very image oriented which i think makes it very hard for artists like you and i to really prosper because we're making shit that it's not really it doesn't really have an image yet or it has an image but it's not what hollywood wants you know yeah do you think with all those obstacles in our way that we could still have this giant resurgence in golden age like we did fucking only six years ago 2016 was six years ago i think some people will definitely rise to be bigger more mainstream artists but i think the main goal i want with all this is just to like leave a mark like like 2016, that's like a mark in history forever. Like people talk about that shit all the to time. To this like day. 20, 2017, 2018, like after like all these artists died, like, you know, like we're going to like make that same mark, if not like carry on like what they wanted to do, you know, like not say do it better because it could come people, off, it could come off a little disrespectful. Yeah. But like we will like, we're just, like what i just said right like that thing yep like, literally yeah like exactly like, that, like a that's, slinky that's, exactly and like that's that's what's happening and that's what i think is, is like really happening i'm like so i i want to just like leave this mark like i don't care if we become like the next hollywood because at the same time hollywood like right now like will smith bro he just showed us all that like this hollywood shit is not even worth taking seriously anymore because he's like he's snapping off all, like he's like like that shit like i don't i don't know what your stance on the, that that like whole thing that happened but i think it was fucking stupid and unnecessary and, i like, think yeah no i feel like number one chris rock did not deserve that in my humble opinion however a lot of celebrities are going on 
benders of sorts, and this has been happening for uh, decades where they do something and it's out of character and you realize Hollywood's not all it's jacked up to be. We had Britney Spears, we had fucking Will Smith, we had Charlie Sheen, we had fucking like Oprah, you know, RIP, like Oprah's daughter, RIP, you know, the fucking media and all this attention and shit in Hollywood, not saying in general, will fucking drive you to insanity or fucking whatever the fuck you want to call it. So yeah, it's not, it's not all it's jacked up to be. And that's why I really appreciate like being DIY and like doing this shit on our terms rather than on their terms. Cause their terms will fucking kill you in some senses. Yeah. Very much so. And I think it's cool that what you said about this, I, I'll call it the slinky effect where things, you know, kind of doors slinky open and like. shit. It's you, we're talking about it being applicable to all ways of life. And you know, that stands valid or true where I literally just backtracked it to the conversation we were having like 30 minutes ago about music and a resurgence. Like it's applicable to fucking music. And we were just talking about it on like philosophy. Like, yeah. So very, very good point. And it holds a lot of solid foundation, like validity. So kids with drugs speaking straight out fucking facts. Yo, thank you. But I wanted to talk about usually, <laughs> I mean, there's no timing to these things. So like sometimes it'll be like, oh, like, oh, your name, so-and-so, the image, the aura, the energy, whatever the fuck. And then after that, it'll be like, oh, inspirations. Or it's like this, or like my last interview where it's like, oh, name, energy, blah, blah, blah. We'll ramble for 30 minutes and then I'll get to the next question. Either way, it's fine. Uh, kids with drugs. I want to talk about musical. And also for you, you bring a different thing to the table, which is also like, canvas art inspirations so we get into a whole new world so tell me about that inspirations on both ends whichever way you want to start with first if you want to inter- interchange whichever um i'll start with music because i feel like that that's the one that i want to i'll just start with music um i feel like my my inspirations uh for a long time like like for since i was a kid i was always like like i always was like Cause always like again like I never fit into like one category of person, so I always listen to like a bunch of different things like rap, rock, um, you know, like electronic music, like 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 everything that that like I could find at the time, you know. So I grew up listening to a lot of a lot of Eminem, Blink One Eighty Two, like Fifty Cent, like like just like the most like random category of people that you don't like expect it, but like you know. So I was going from like like screaming like like emo shit to like like 50 cent raps and then like like you know just like hella boom bap and then hella like like you know rock screamo emo stuff you know and um as i grew older like i started to find like more stuff like psychedelic rock um you know st- everything from like the 60s 70s like beautiful like i love right. it so much and like you know then then i started listening to like other stuff like like Japanese rock and like yo shout out to all my homies that put me on to this music because it's truly beautiful music and like um yeah so my music is my music inspirations have always been like on some rapping and emo stuff and then Lil Peep came along you know and he really introduced everything he was like the pioneer of emo rap so that shit like you know, I was like, damn, like, this is, like, literally who, like, I, I have felt, like, in my head for, like, my entire life, and he's just, like, rapping about it, like, 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 he just says shit how it was, it's just, like, damn, like, uh, I don't know, like, I, I, I hate talking. There was talking something about so Lil great Pete about now. him. No, I know, because, oh, my God, between TikTok and children finding Little Peep, and I feel like fan bases, pe- people might disagree with you, but I feel like fan bases can ruin an artist, not necessarily. Oh, no, I, I, I 100% agree, like, I hate everything fan base of like the artists that i love not necessarily their work of arts or even their legacy in sorts but it just makes you not want to group yourself into anything to do with the name like you like i fuck with little peep heavy heavy am Same. i gonna am i gonna come off to someone in a conversation and be like yeah i'm a little peep fan fuck no because then you, you come off as like those like oh uh, it's just like i don't know is this is every little generation kids. has their pre- their people there's either little kids and you know it's not their fault they're immature they're still learning but they're either glorifying drug use or sexualizing the dead like a dead person which is really fucked up in both ways even if he was alive sexualizing him to a degree is still fucked up and so like you're not grouping me in with those people 
sorry 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 not Same. sorry like i don't want to be associated with that shit yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like i don't know but yeah little peep was like one of like my biggest inspirations fucking joji you know um who else tyler the creator um damn i i it's hard to name because i like i listen to so much stuff but like what what i would say i sound like the most like would be peep joji x um bones uh xavier wolf maybe you know I get, like i get all those vibes from you i was listening to your whole discography before we started today and yeah, that's exactly you. the vibe i got very good stuff i think you have a song called crystal minds what's it called Crystal worlds crystal worlds i like that one a lot but going back to little peep before we start climbing into like discography and stuff going back to little peep and what you said about him i think it's so cool and also the other artist you named is like i think it's so cool how because when i was a kid this is a core memory of mine we had a ps3 when i was like six or seven we had a ps3 and it had like downloaded songs on it from like the people who owned it prior because it was pre-owned or whatever let me fucking itch my scalp real quick i'm fucking here fucking with this hat on and shit and it had papa roach uh last resort it had dmx rough riders anthem and then it had fucking i think like maybe uh akon they won't let me out locked locked up they won't let me out so i had as a kid i was introduced to like these very different levels of genre like very opposite ends almost i guess you could say opposite ends whatever and then like as a preteen and teenager i found artists that there was no uh what's the word there was no drastic one end or like radical one end of the spectrum they are the blend of all those things in one like low peep tyler the creator joji it's like all these alternative but then if you look at the production it has a lot of hip-hop influence type shit and it's like crazy how shit morphed into each other and we found them we resonate with it and you can trace all the way back from early childhood to now yeah with little peep when i found him i was like holy fucking shit i found little peep accidentally same i was watching i'll I'll never forget it i was watching it was august it was the day his album dropped august 15th 2017 so i was i found him technically a little late because he i only got to see him and experience him while he was alive for three months four months and then he passed away which sucked um but i found him by accident because i was me and my friend were watching a little pump music video like laughing at it like because you know it was like oh haha he repeats a lot uh let's like watch it ironically yeah. or unironically i was still bumping into it and then it auto played onto little peep and i was like what the fuck is this yo facts no for me i remember i found what was the first song i listened to by peep it was um i think it was i crash you crash and uh, I was just watching, like, like uh, I, I just, I was drawing, and I had, um, I was listening to, like, a lot of X at the time, and a lot of, a lot of Ski, a lot of everybody that, that was, like, in that era, right? And fucking, then Peep comes along, and, then, like, I stopped drawing, I put my pen down, and I was just, like, I looked to my side, and I was, like, damn. And, and like, I just, like, I was, just, like, fuck like who the fuck is this dude like i if i could like express the way like it made me feel like it gave me shivers like i i got like like goosebumps that's the word that i'm looking for and i was just dude like i it felt like like i had been heard but i was listening to the song right yeah and i fucking then like after i i never found the song again after that <laughs> for like a good for a good like like couple of months and then my friend sent me white wine and I, at that point i was into like my very like filthy frank era of my like teenage years yo i, would I say. had the same shit i had the same phase so i was like i was like who the fuck is this edgy dude bro like this emo ass but then i was like but wait i'm emo and then it like I, it's I, such it's such an easy transition from like meme kid to like alternative like that. It yeah. Happened to me. It fucking <laughs> like, happened to me. Instantaneously. Like, like the first time I heard it, I was like fil- filthy Frank memer stage era. Second time I heard it alternative. Like that, that's like 
the like like literally like walking through the door first outfit is something else and then you walk through it and it's a completely different outfit like that's that's exactly how fast they change like it's fucking crazy Finding Lil Peep was, I mean, I'm so, I don't care how it sounds. When I found Lil Peep, I fell in love with Lil Peep and I'll forever be in love with Lil Peep. Not even like anything like trying to be suggestive about it. It's like, he was just such, his image, his music, what he had to say, his beliefs, even if you dig into like his politics and stuff, it was just like, this dude's a fucking goat. Yeah. And I, Lil Peep, it's funny to say it like, cause you know, when I found Lil Peep, I was like 14. So I wasn't really worried about like what the fuck was going on outside and, like my fucking narrow vision. I didn't care about politics. I didn't care about art like that. I didn't care about it until, I mean, until I found like, until this era, I was just like, oh yeah, I used to do YouTube and like watch memes and like shit like that. It was a very narrow way of living. I was a kid, you know, but with Lil Peep and his expression and what I was, what I ended up going through soon after I found him and also, he's very open about his leftist politics, which opened a whole different door for me when it came to, like, the world and viewing it. Like, look, got the little fucking commie frog in the corner. Like, <laughs> it wasn't, oh, it yeah. wasn't, it wasn't too long before I fucking found where I felt I belonged. And it was, and I'm not gonna lie, it was probably because of Lil Peep. Isn't that fucking crazy? Like, oh, yeah, I found my political identity of sorts because of little fucking Peep. Like, it's just not expected. Same. I, 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 I would say I'm, I'm an, I'm an anarchist, but not in the sense where it's like fuck yeah, anarchy, like like break the law type shit. Like no, like like be fucking respectful and peaceful, bro. But just like own your own stuff. Like that's it. Like just do your own thing. Yeah, focus I find, on nothing else. Like help I, the community. Like right. You know. During quarantine and COVID, I found myself diving into my politics a lot, and I find myself between an anarchist of sorts and almost a communist because i feel like a big thing with anarchy like you were just talking about is community and helping each other but also like kind of doing our own things like no overruling like type of government no class and shit like that and then i guess communism it has its parallels but it also has its differences so you know i take i take from each one and i you know i believe it you know whatever i believe rather than like trying to full-fledged fall under a label but like, look, right now, this fucking Mickey Mouse is an anarchy Mickey Mouse on my shirt. It's just <laughs> yeah, so funny you yeah. mentioned that. Um, I mean, oh, yeah, Lil Peep was such a fucking influencer on so many different levels, and I'm so upset he passed away. There's a fucking conspiracy theory that he was taken out because of, like, his influence on the youth. It's just fucking insane. Like, <laughs> I mean, I could see it, you know, but because his label is the people who killed him and, like, you know, uh, it, it gets it, into hurts to talk about. But. It gets into so much discourse depending on that whole conversation. So we won't we won't touch on it because that'll be a whole fucking three hour conversation we could have. But oh shit, I almost pulled out my charger. Let's not do that. Yeah, no fucking. But people think the fucking government killed him. People think whatever his friends killed him. Whatever the fuck, who cares? I mean, who I I care, but we won't talk about it. However, back to where we were, back on the track inspirations we got to Lil Peep you said Bones Joji Tyler Creator and other artists like that uh musical wise you can keep going or if you're uh, or if you feel like you know you're done in that er- uh, area we can talk about uh more so like visual art but keep on going I feel like right now you know I, I got a, my my friend gifted me an electric guitar like a few months ago so I want to get into like like right now I'm just like learning how to make music I guess you know um because i and when i whenever I, I like talk to to musicians or anybody who like uh makes music they'll tell me like all these like they'll use a bunch of words that i'm just like huh like what like what, does, what the fuck does that mean you know because like i've i'm i draw shit bro like that's that's uh that's what i like i've started doing and like so me venturing off into music um you know it's 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 a weird like position to be in especially because like right now like I don't fully like am, like uh carry myself as like this like artist like in like a musical sense um so I don't feel like many people will take me as like like seriously with like when it comes to my music like I'm taking more seriously for like my art and stuff like more like more respected I would say yeah um not that I'm not respected like I I have you know I completely understand what you're saying yeah like I don't know 
I just try to be a good person with everybody. And like that, that gives me like, you know, a good, good rep, you know? And uh, yeah, it's, but what I'm trying to say for a fucking, just fucking stoned brain, I got an electric guitar, right? Yeah. And once like I'd get more comfortable with like finding my voice and like, my singing voice and like, you know, just learning how to like, like, like the small, the small things of like, like the fine tuning things of like music, you know, like I'll start making, I want to make like, like psychedelic rock type music, like, you know, like not even like maybe some, some like, like seven minute long songs, you know, like on some like more like uh grunge rock inspiration rather than uh, hip hop. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I want to go more into that direction or like into like a shoegaze kind of direction. I very much feel we need that in our scene, like people venturing off away from everything being trap influenced, because I feel like a lot of people fall into the bubble. of like, oh, yeah, every beat has to have 808s and hi hats. And yeah. but we can just do shit. You could just make shit. Dude, you know, I was um, and I'm so glad you say this because everything you say and you articulate is everything I felt as both an artist and I guess a media person like when i do this podcast and stuff like i find myself um whenever i try to perceive myself which is always like a fucking fun double-edged sword because it's like go either really well or really bad um but when i try to perceive myself it's like i don't know if i necessarily see myself as like mikey mcchapa or michael the musician but i, I find it easier for me to resonate doing this because i don't know i mean as a kid i was doing youtube and then I did music and now it just feels like the best of both worlds. Anyway, with that, oh, being, yeah. with that being said, it's like, I listen to a lot of music. Like for example, you said psychedelic rock and I listen to my Jimi Hendrix here and there and other influences as well. And the other day I was listening to uh, childish Gambino's album. The, um, I think me and your mom or something like that, or <laughs> I think, I think that's what it's called. Correct me if I'm wrong. And that has a lot of like psychedelic and more so funk influences. And I was like, you know, I should really like venture out into doing something more than what I'm doing as an artist. And I'm glad that I'm not alone in that because I feel like some people get comfortable in their lane of what they're doing. Yeah. And it kind of just molds them into like this one persona that's just like, although, yes, that was a beautiful uh, era, like with this linky effect, we can't just do the same things as like the past. Like we have to do it the same but different like have some sort of like twist to it like you know um peep did psychedelics right but he never like really like rapped about it or like made trippy sounds in his music or like makes like emo rock with like psychedelic rock like that or or, like uh emo rap with psychedelic rock we can't we can't speak for what could have happened because we don't know down the line exactly but like but from what he did leave us with, it's very much, you know, it stood, it stood in a lane almost. I mean, he, yeah. he, he, he genre bended and whatnot. I'm not going to say that he didn't innovate, but it did stay in a certain type of sound, especially for marketing purposes. Exactly. And like, you know, it's, um, hmm, how can I put this into words? Like he, I'm not saying that he, he like, like didn't do enough because he did way more than enough he like he like fucking like turned the keys onto the car and pressed gas for like everybody else to fucking go like like he was like the 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 main dude that started all of this and like that's the power that he holds but i feel like which each like slinky effect generation like if that <laughs> if we're talking in those terms like yeah it's a uh, i want that's what that's like what i want to do like i want to like take like what he did and to put my put my twist of like psychedelic rock influences into it and like all these like trippy things and like you know um we're not just with like people like with every artist that i listen to that have made me into like the person that i am because nobody's gonna be 100 percent original like we have to learn from something you know right and we like take inspiration from something yeah exactly but with that being said and what you want to do and your intent i feel like is very much like we're not alone on that uh sentiment because there's a bunch of other artists in our scene that are spreading away from just sticking in the lane like i was just talking to fallacy last episode 
and he's very much he did like a false he did a song called false silhouettes and it's very much like i always say it gives me mtv like unplugged vibes like that 90s like grunge acoustic shit and i'm like nobody else in the scene has done anything like this i was like it's really dope so to you to have that sentiment as well to want to create outside of like this lane that we already have paid for us to make another lane or of sorts so people can follow that is really dope i mean that's exactly why when i make music i don't stick to a genre i'm not like hey i'm aiming for this sound and we're sticking with it like it's a different sound every time it's a different thing every time because like fuck it you know let's do it I and mean, i'm glad that artists are uh that's dawning upon artists that you don't have to stick to an image because i feel like if you look at like every successful artist of sorts like before the last 10 years it was a lot of sticking to one sound i think like i don't know a, a nice artist i like to um not to ramble an artist that i like to discuss when it comes to change like changing their sound often enough is like kanye because i feel yeah. like before him it was like everyone was rapping and they were sticking to an image and marketing that image and just sticking to a lane. And ever since then, which was what Kanye came out like probably like 15, 16 years ago, I would like to say, right. Even a little farther before then it's like to now we are making tremendous progress as artists when it comes to keeping that alive. And I'm glad that you have that sentiment because I feel like locally in our scene, some people do get comfortable in their lane and it's like, you have so much more to offer potential wise. Everybody can do so much. And something that I've noticed, especially here in, in with this like under NYC underground scene. And again, if any of you are listening, I'm not hating. I just have my own opinion. You know, everybody makes the same kind of music. And it just it's hard to keep track of who is who. You know, there's no sense of individual individualism everybody is trying to do the, the same thing over and over again and like i get like I, don't get me wrong some of their music is actually pretty fucking good like and i i, I still listen to it but it's just like everybody is trying to be like this like they, they've like created this like uh image of what being different is and they all go into the same mold and like i don't get me wrong i do it too sometimes but like it's a you know like i just like i've seen this and in, in like and like i've seen like i've gone to concerts and like not even concerts but like events where they all like perform and stuff and like there's lineups and like you know and it, it i see the potential like i i genuinely see the potential but everybody just has to be themselves more you know and you know, if I want to see that more, like, you just got to, you got to be the change you want to see, you know? Right. So in that sense, like, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be that change, but like, you know, obviously I'm not going to like, I'm not the shit right now to like, to like set that, that staple of like, oh, this is the pavement, you know? Yeah. So, you know, but like, I want, I would like to like make everybody just like, kind of like realize that with me. Type, you know? And you don't even need like a, um, a big following or any sort of like higher up position when it comes to like, I guess the musical hierarchy to inspire and innovate because what I'm seeing a lot of now on bigger scales and smaller scales is bigger artists are venturing out now into like more creative and innovative sounds because the younger artists are so fucking hungry and so you know, just and just naturally just themselves. And it's causing a a new desire when it comes to consumers, like people listening and stuff. And older artists are like, oh, shit, like I got to change my shit up because people don't want to hear me anymore. People want to listen to the guy with fucking however many followers who's just fucking crazily himself or herself, you know? So it, yeah, it doesn't take any sort of, I think, following. And it's cool to even bring that up because I actually never really even perceived it like that. Like what we're doing as I always see what we're doing as it can influence the artists of tomorrow, but it could also influence the artists of yesterday as well, who are already established. And I've, I've, I haven't thought about that till now. For sure. Like so many people are putting like, like rock music into their shit. Like Bobby Shmurda sampled Adam's song in like one of his newest songs. And that, and it's just like, bro, like, 
Lil Peep did that, you know, like yeah. Lil Peep did that in some like shape, way, shape, or form, like a domino effect happened where that shit happened where Bobby Shmurda is rapping over Adam's song by Blink-182. And the whole mainstream wave is just now catching on to what was popular back in 2016, 2017. Like they had an idea of it, you know, because some of those artists got mainstream success, Pump got mainstream success, X got mainstream success, Peep a little bit. And stuff like that but now they're really trying it for themselves which i feel mixed about because when you have a label with all this funding and all these fucking like industry plants trying to replicate something that was so raw and authentic it's like it's like extremely fucking like oh shit this bubble's about to fall extremely watered down type shit like like mgk fucking mgk just, bro fuck mgk fuck mgk but there's also cool influences as well like i think because of like that whole rock sound resurging and shit people are like it's causing exactly what we were talking about older established artists to innovate into things that aren't just what they are like you were talking about um bobby shmurda i can the first (laughs) thing that came up to my head was hey it's 11 11 woo um that's something that came to my head was a boogie like he doesn't he have like albums like me and my guitar or some shit or like yes, a song right. or whatever i was like why do he started using guitar out of nowhere and i was like that's so fucking weird and uh of course there's other artists to name as well with more rock influences look at uh doja cat just covered a song from uh courtney loves band oh shit for real she covered i think celebrity skin i think it's called Mm, i haven't mm. heard i haven't heard but i'll listen to it after this yeah it's pretty it's pretty cool and it's nice to see like all this rock influence and it's not only rock because there's so many other genres that are slept on that should have more influence into the mainstream uh god knows what we'll see next and hopefully you know people like you will fucking infuse psychedelic rock and more so because i think people are so fixated on pop punk punk and like i guess like emo i, I guess i will name the three but there's so many other fucking genres and not only rock, but just genres in general. We have the fucking blues. We have jazz. We have fucking funk. We have all this. And they all have their influences necessarily because funk influence like hip hop and rap and stuff. But it's like, let's see it come back into modern mainstream rather than just like, I don't know. That's why I fuck with, with uh, Lil Darky so much. If you listen to his music, you know, and Spider Gang, like all those people, like yeah. they, they have they have like they have like a bunch of like sounds that I don't hear in other in other people's like music and that's I love that shit so much and then the stuff that he talks about like is literally what like he has like this one song called gangster rapper punk rock star Mm -hmm. um and that song just describes the New York scene so beautifully in my opinion and like um you know if if you ever like want to listen to it and like read the lyrics read the lyrics as you listen like it's it's important because like you'll miss a lot but um bro like like i i love how people like little darky like he's also a big ass inspiration to me because like you know he he's one of the first people that i've seen that like have like genuinely tried to to like do something other than just like no melody type beats you know like you know, like he started off with that, but then he started going into some crazy ass. Like, like he has songs with like ukuleles and like, you know, like banjos and like, like shit is just like, like hella peaceful. And like, then he has like his like dark side and like his light, and then like the the like images that he makes with that. You know, it's it's awesome. I have, I have to check him out because I never really listened to him at all, like anything of his. So I would definitely like check that out because it sounds very uh intriguing. But um. With that being said, no, yeah, I I like that fucking artists are, again, breaking the boundaries of, like, fuck what instruments I'm going to use. I'm going to use a fucking banjo. I'm going to use a ukulele. I'm going to use a fucking trombone. Like, not everything needs to be, not everything needs to be guitar and FL Studio. Like, you know, (laughs) let's, let's, let's bring it out. Let's be creative. Let's be innovative. I like that a lot, Um, which is cool that we come back to inspirations, because I did want to touch on your visual art inspirations because we never touched on it we touched on music and we named you know our artists but i definitely want to touch more on the thing that you do that nobody else does in the scene which is visual art i don't know <laughs> many other people that paint in the scene so it's like fuck yeah let's talk about it all right so my 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 inspirations for uh for my visual art would be more like paintings from like 
like long at like long like a long ass time ago like um not necessarily with these but like also with these like there's like a lot of like mysticism um hermetism and uh esoteric stuff like just a bunch of like um like spiritual knowledge and uh occult things i would say but again i don't like to rep that i yeah no we don't need labels I, um, but i get you i used to, as a kid i've always drawn since like as long as i can remember bro like this is, like i've been doing it for like my entire life and um fucking at some point i decided that like i could instead of just drawing like i got i used to just draw like like famous people or like you know just draw like pictures of people as a kid but then like at some point i realized like yo like i don't have to make shit that looks like like photorealistic like i could just do whatever the fuck i want on a piece of paper and so i just decided started to like create like my own like like basically what i like would envision in my head i would put it on paper and sometimes i can't like like think of anything so i just let my hand run free and then it eventually becomes something you know and like i create me as i go type thing again like it uh that's why a lot of my pieces feel very vulnerable because like it's a uh, it's very like like a deep dive into like like what's inside like my soul not just like like psyche but like everything like like everything everything like things that you can't even explain with like words and it's um you know yeah like uh i think that's very admirable to have to be able to even have that ability like you're very creatively in tune to fucking just let your hand take you where it leads and then not only that but because i feel like people do that in private but you share it as well which is an not only having the ability to do so but very courageous to share it with other people because i think a lot of people become insecure about their art in any form i'm very insecure about my music sometimes sometimes i'm like oh, i don't want to post this shit because i'm Same. very hard on myself and i think i guess people are learning that music is now more open to i guess or is more subjective like whoever you know people like what they like to listen to um but i feel like with visual art or at least i always felt like it when i try it it's like i don't know i guess people i don't know if people hold a standard i'm not in the art world enough to know but i feel like maybe it's like a little more i've always felt like it, no i don't want to say even more judgmental but i don't know i've always felt like it's a little i've always been scared to show anything that my hands have done compared to like music i mean the the art community <laughs> it's a very uh they, there could be some pretty rigid people like they just like like mm. like personally i don't believe in judging art i think everything is subjective and everything's beautiful in its own way and it's up to interpretation yeah. but yeah there is a lot of rigid pretentious people who feel there's a fucking standard set on anything and i'm like why like I, i've gone to i've gone to uh art galleries here in new york because i'm trying to get some of my art in art galleries i was supposed to call some art curator yesterday but i was on the train uh, while he like was texting me and then after a while he just stopped texting me and i stopped texting him but um what's it called yeah i'm in those places like i've had like the first time i ever went like i've had people just like straight up just like mid-sentence walk away from me and not come back like type shit like they'll be they'll be on some disrespectful shit but it'll be like very like like sly like as fuck like just like slick it's like awesome slick, like, slick shit and like you know it's uh you know i i don't i don't really take care of it anymore because like who the fuck are these people like i've never met them anyways they don't know who the fuck i am they don't know right. like anything about me so they like them just walking away is just like another npc character walking away from you in a video game type shit you know yeah yeah, yeah. it's like all right you but, go home um, with your life something that i have learned with art because like i get insecure about it all the time too like like i spend like days not sleeping and then i'll get like 40 likes on an art piece and i'm just like bro that ass and it's like again social media fuck that shit for making me think that way but like you know i i learned i've been trying to learn to be like more proud of myself yeah i mean i think Over. a lot of a lot of people get wrapped up on a uh on numbers and 
are like being feeling validated from things like numbers and likes and comments when i think the whole beauty of it all is sharing what your yeah. mind is capable of and what you created exactly it's just like like i'll, I'll post it like i the way i be, i'm trying to view social media now is like everything i post is for like my friends everybody else that follows me that i don't talk to like they just follow me like i don't you know i doubt that they'll see my shit because like algorithms and shit but like all the people that i like i i have that are in my like in, like my my circles uh you know it, my poster for them i'll be like yo look at this shit, bro like um so i'm also like you know uh, there's a lot of like knowledge within my my art pieces i would say that like it's like you see like you watch a movie and then like you get some sort of like like cheesy che cheesy ass knowledge like about like friendship or something you know yeah, like, like, a, like a theme yeah like a theme there you go like um you know and that that's because of psychedelics you know like psychedelics <laughs> We'll, we'll throw your ass on like i don't know if you've ever taken psychedelics not yet but uh, not I've, yet i i intend on it sometime down the line but i haven't yet all i've done is like smoke <laughs> so psychedelics is a, is, is a crazy experience like you know you can think it'll go one way but then it'll just like launch you a completely different direction and so with like and then again kids with drugs you know like the whole like, learning experience message that you get from that is written all over my art like like there's like shit that I, the like that i express on here that's like fuck psychedelics have made me you know like there's like good and, and negative effects as is like with everything else you know like you smoke too much you kind of get stupid you forget what you're saying you start rambling just like i am but like you know it's a uh, every time like you like the psychedelics like you just there's always the good and the bad. And I try to explain that within all my art pieces. And like, so the people that are like art that want to try psychedelics will like learn and like to look at things and like a not not to like create expectations, but just to like know what the fuck is up type shit. Like, um, cause or like what's what's like the reality of, of things. Cause drugs aren't just like, you know, you can't just make yourself happy, like especially with psychedelics if you're trying if you have like the intent of like escaping like some some like your thoughts or like just reality i guess yeah and, with some of them um i'm pretty sure doesn't it just reflect like the state of mind you're in sort of when it comes to like psychedelics like that's why like bad trips are kind of a thing like if you're yeah, in a bad like, state of mind like it might not go the best for you it's i mean it depends because like i've had i've had trips where i've been like pretty pretty depressed and like then i come out and i'm just like whoa life is so beautiful and i'm so thankful like for everything you know but um it all depends on your intent because like if you're like if you're you're feeling sad and you fucking like don't want to think and you think that taking shrooms is gonna fix that shrooms will make you think about it way more you know but then there's if you're sad and you're like all right i want to take shrooms and i want to like i want to go through whatever i'm, I'm like running away from and face it you can face it and again it, it might not be pretty but medicine isn't supposed to taste good bro like you know that's and, a very good fucking analogy or point i like that statement continue on yeah and um so like again like ego deaths everybody is always like holy shit like ego deaths are so scary and bad because they are bro like on some real shit they're fucking terrifying like i thought i was like dying on some shit like i i remember the first time i ever took five grams of shrooms never go above five grams unless you can handle it but you know i i had to call my ex and i had to tell her that i loved her we were talking at the time and like i was just like bro if i'm dying right now i just want you to know that i love you and i just laid there and then she's like bro you're not dead and i was like oh <laughs> like but, sorry uh, for the dramatics no yeah but that's completely understandable like being showing gratitude for not only life but i think people in your life as well yeah and like you know like now now whenever i take psychedelics like the other day i i smoked dmt and um I, I at first because I've learned that with any of these psychedelics you have to treat it the same way you treat spirituality like you meditate you eat well 
you get sleep, you know, you treat your body good. And then like, you know, you go on your, your journey, your trip. And so I, I did a, a day of just like eating like as healthy as I could, you know, like, like I ate a salad, I like shit that I don't normally eat. Cause I'm not a healthy motherfucker. Like also, my diet you know, is ass. No, yeah. Yeah. I'm God. <laughs> and so, so I like, I decided to do that. I took a shower, a cold shower in the morning. I meditated for like, like an hour. Um, then I, I decided to take my first poll. And as I was doing that, I was thinking, God, the universe, angels, the Buddha, like, like everything that I believe in, because I'm an omnist. Okay. Um, Which I shed some light, shed, yeah, shed some light on that, because I've never heard of that term. I've heard of agnostic, atheist, and then you have your all your typical, like, religions, but I never heard of, like, omnist. Omnism is... Um, the belief that every religion is real you just choose not to identify with one specific one like every single religion is a real like so then i would happen. i would fall right under that umbrella because that's literally how i take day-to-day life so that's it mikey mcchop is the omnis thank you for teaching me that Fuck now yeah I, welcome now, now i know what to label it but yeah continue and... on so i was giving my thanks to like everything that like i feel gratitude towards like on, on some like spiritual protection and like journey and like you know like i was like thank you for like um putting me through the things that i have gone through and done and like protecting me from all these things as well because like i like i will i all the knowledge that i've learned from life i just i would never trade that for anything like like even if it's like painful and like it hurts like i'm just you know i'm keeping that shit like that the knowledge that i've learned from it because that shit's that shit's important as fuck knowledge and will like, take you a lot farther than i think anything else material or not material can take you in this lifetime oh god and this is is real as fuck fuck my necklace just started choking me but uh <laughs> yeah so as where where what was the last thing i said i'm sorry we were talking about you showing gratitude for everything you believe in like, right and uh, stuff, stuff like that okay so yeah and so i i gave my thanks i took my first poll and i'm I, I for like the past year or so like i have like felt like this like discomfort inside of like my skin like on, on like i don't like like maybe it was like some spiritual shit going on or like like the way i was feeling like mentally or like what i was going through but like i just felt like like very uncomfortable being inside of my body like my soul wanted to like be like free type shit right and um then i i started thinking about that i started to get scared because dmt can be pretty overwhelming and then like my higher self almost came behind me and i whispered into my ear that fear is only an illusion that like you have to power through it and right um i did that and then i started to like see these like lines float in front of my face and then they manifested into like angel wings and then this angel lady came up to me um i actually have have always had this picture for as a kid all right I don't think you'll be able to hear it, the the recording, but like, I see a it. Picture of an angel, a angel lady carrying. I mean, watching over two kids crossing over a bridge that's about to fall apart. And I saw that lady, and that angel, and she hugged me, and then uh, she stepped back, like, like you know when like your mom hugs you, and then she like like grabs your shoulders and she looks back to look at you. Yeah, she did that. And then I always do this peace sign with my hand, like like this or some shit. Okay. Uh, a lot of people think I'm doing like the Hail Satan thing, but I'm not. Um, I'm not doing that. And then she like t- like booped my third eye. Yeah. And then after that, like I can't like I was completely sober after that. Like I came back. It was like three minutes of just being in that trippy space, and I just felt so at peace with myself and. So like like the the gratitude that I was expressing, like it was given back to me, like I felt it, and um, 
I started crying. I was like, cause like, like good tears. It, cause I hadn't felt like that good in a long time spiritually or like right. mentally. So then I started calling like my friends. I started calling my mom. I was like, yo, like, I love you guys. Thank you guys for existing. And I know that like a lot of my friends, like we're going, are going through some stuff right now. So I just like, I also knew that they needed to hear stuff like that. And like, you know, they started crying with me and shit. And I was just like, bro, this is like such a beautiful experience. So like, you know, like we're all it like, it really solidified that we're all in this together and we're not alone type shit. That's very beautiful. And with me, I'm glad you're sharing this with me because I'm not the type of person to ever dismiss anyone's experiences. So you're telling me all this and I believe you 110%. I'm like, he saw this angel, this angel booped his head. I believe in all of it. Bro. It all happened. Because there's a lot of people who are like, you're fucking crazy. And I'm like, no, he's not yeah. crazy. He's fucking I've, spitting facts. I, but like the thing about psychedelics is that like you'll hallucinate and you'll see stuff like that. And you got to stay aware of it, right? Like, the, I mean... You know, they could be real. You know, you never fucking know. Like, there's no way to disprove that they're not besides, like, saying, like, you're crazy. But, like, um, as long as you keep aware that, like, in that space, like, anything that, like, if you, if you like, it's all your perception of yourself because it's yourself reflecting on yourself. Um, so any, anything, any, like, kind of, like, being or entity that you'll come across in there, it's kind of just a reflection of you and how you feel on the inside. And that's why some people will see like pretty evil things in there. And then some people will see pretty good things in there. And I, I, I see both. Like I see, I've seen like, and it sounds crazy to talk about all these things because it's just like, but you got to be aware that it's drugs and like, yeah. you know, drugs will do that. <laughs> no, but I think it's really cool because I think, um, I mean, at least how I function is things are very, when it comes to visuals and visualizing things, it makes things easier to comprehend and understand. Yeah. So when you're taking these emotions and feelings and things within yourself and traits within yourself and visualizing it in front of you, you're seeing angels, you're seeing demons, you're seeing anything in between. It makes it easier to comprehend not only yourself, but everything around you, people around you, life itself and stuff like that. Cause we can never fully understand it. That's kind of like the whole mystery of existing and living. Yeah. But trying to at least take a grasp at it is always, you know, I guess fun and helpful. And I very much love that. And my revelation with all this and listening to you and such is like doing this podcast and listening to everyone's stories and stuff, and especially yours right now. I'm like, I always found myself trying to seek find myself trying to seek notoriety or recognition for my abilities with music and this and like I think the truest intent of what I always or I always said my truest intent was is helping people and bring people together as a community and these are such helpful lessons that you're teaching not only me right now but people in general and this is going to touch other people's ears and I feel like a uh, a channel to help one end reach the other. We're all like, vessels carrying other vessels, bro. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you speaking all of this into my podcast, and I share this onto other people, and we together collaboratively, you and me, are you know sending a message out to people, and they they can resonate with it, and they're like, "Yo, they're saying shit I felt like for years, and I've never even heard it come out of anyone else's mouth." It's yeah. like it's really dope, and it just made me reevaluate my whole fucking uh goal in life and with my podcast and stuff or at least not leave a little at least not goal because my goal's always been to help people and to you know I, i'm i like i like shit like this like everything you're saying and everything and all this i'm like this is exactly like my vibe but you get caught up in some of the bumps along the way like numbers money yeah shit right. like that so but it really just brought me back to the original goal of everything that i'm doing so thank you for that just by speaking and being you fucking Tourist. amazing fucking awesome i'm so so glad we had you on <laughs> today um Dude, i love this we didn't we was like let's not even talk about discography let's not talk about canvas it's like let's just talk about fucking life a lot of shit to teach Bro. people because you know what there's a lot of people who are not not necessarily on this level but there's a lot of people who aren't as open to all this stuff or they aren't aware of all of it when it comes to like 
anything higher than what they see on a day-to-day. A lot of people get wrapped up in material. A lot of people get wrapped up in money. A lot of people get wrapped up in ego. A lot of people get wrapped up in society itself. You know, it's like the, the the thing about all of this is like, especially with like kids, bro, like children, like these are all things that like we knew as a kid, like, like, like as a kid, like I always like, you know, like you're always like friends, like it's innocent, like you're, you you want to like, want to help people like all these things. But as you grow, like you get conditioned to believe all these things that you have to do in order to survive. And like those other things that you used to do as a kid kind of become less important because you're, you're like fending for yourself at some point, you know, you're trying to like make something for yourself and putting yourself out there and it's scary and it's like you get judged and like all this shit and like it'll make it it turns it turns like your goals into something that it's not and like I with that like I always like this is another reason why I just I don't try to be like this or put on this cool guy persona I just try to be who I am like if people think that like me talking right now sounds like geeky like fuck yeah I am geeky I'm I'm like full-blown nerd dude like I'm a hippie I'm all this stuff I'm all this stuff like but that's just that's hmm how how do I tie this all into to everything else like you don't you avoid getting wrapped up in everything I named when it comes to society ego money whatever like you're like I'm me I'm spreading all this shit that we get so we stray away from the inner child bro you got to feed that don't feed like corporate stuff don't feed like into adulthood like you could be an adult and still take care of your inner child i feel like a lot of people really forget to do that you know like what's so crazy is that for the last couple weeks to months i always deal with my internal conflicts and i internalize everything and take it all in myself like it's not often that i'll like really exert it onto other people and talk about it um and my recent thing has been not only money and image and how people perceive me and stuff like that. And not only like, that's not necessarily saying what my values are, but like trying to deprogram from um, a way I thought was the way like, Oh yeah. Like, you know, you gotta have, you gotta do well financially. Otherwise people won't respect you and you gotta do this or otherwise people won't value you. And it's like, fuck being valued. Then if I don't align with what you're, you know, what you're fucking with, like I've been conditioned, I've been programmed even recently by people who felt like my worth was based off what I could do for them or what I could do for society and stuff like that. And it's like, fuck you. I'm worth enough because I'm living and I'm breathing and I'm living and I'm experiencing the human experience. You know, we're all human and we're all worth. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. And, but I do have trouble sometimes deprogramming and trying to step away from that. Cause sometimes you realize there's all these subconscious ties you have to this train of thought. Yeah. But, I very much see what you're saying and I can visualize it easy because everything you're saying, I have some sort of parallel within my current life right now. And I bet everyone listening probably does too. So very, very valid, everything you're saying and applicable to a lot of people's lives. Hold on. Have I been like fucking white, whited out by my fucking bright ass? When you come closer, I think it makes the exposure better. But then when you step away, yeah very much so it's okay it makes you look like this divine angel man with all this light shining yeah yeah, yeah. (laughs) and then you're speaking all these facts it's like yo this man is like angelic but um i appreciate that no yeah it's fucking you spit in facts and it's crazy to think that or not crazy to think because i know there's other people like you and i who think this shit but when you're talking to someone face to face or screen to screen or camera camera whatever and like they're just articulating everything that you've been thinking it's like holy shit like you know it makes you feel it makes you feel more human and it makes me feel a lot more connected as like you know when it comes to like community and really prioritizing people because I feel like people get wrapped up in individualism in the sense of you know uh fucking what's the word what's the expression the uh fend for yourself you know standoffish type shit where it's like no as children we were very much so like helpful nature help each other you know clean up clean up everybody clap your hands you know let's help each other fucking whatever whatever yeah. task as a, an adult you're like oh fend for yourself you know like fucking kill or be killed it's like very standoffish and it very isolating and a lot of people it get, doesn't have to be that way bro it doesn't it really have to doesn't, be that way bro. 
and there's like I I carry I try to carry that energy with me and every time somebody like disagrees with me they try to say that I'm very like I have some sort of god complex but that I don't think there is anything wrong with not god because I don't think you can understand that motherfucker but like Jesus like if you just try to be like that motherfucker and you know that he you are not him but like he is in he is you type shit like you just become such a better person like just like there's nothing Love wrong with neighbor, using bro. yeah you and also using any platform you have to teach others because i think people take the term god complex and also automatically make it a negative connotation but yeah I'm not saying we're above anybody else because you and i are equal to the, any fucking dude on the street for real but taking whatever little platform whatever little uh whatever you have and educating people and helping people you know it whatever you want to call it a god complex all you want but we're helping motherfuckers you know god, it's all, bro, like it's all about intent exactly like there there the people have the word god complex mixed up immensely there's the people with god complex where they think that they are above all and that they are almighty and all powerful that Straight is up, not, like narcissists and shit exactly that is not what the fuck i'm trying to do i'm trying to be as humble as i can i i'm trying to teach everyone that being humble being loving like saying i love you to your friends bro like my friend group did not say that shit before i came into the friend group and i think that's just fucking beautiful because, my friends like, some of my friends still have a hard time saying i love you like, i love you and those would be like mm-hmm. like and be like fuck you say that for i was just like bro <laughs> and it's just like yeah now every time i hung up the phone like i love you bro and they're like love you too bro and you know it's just like that's just beautiful because then you're making like family like this is no longer just friends these are like family, family yeah and it's just like that's just so important to me family loyalty like dude just be i always a good tell, person, bro i always tell like not even like childhood friends because i have childhood friends and i'm always like i love you and it's expected because they're like my brothers and like sisters and stuff but like even like my like i'm part of this collective symbol run and i'm always dropped we have a whole group chat together and i'm always like i love you guys like you know i really appreciate what you guys do for me like yo y'all doing your thing i thank you like always gratitude and shit and I love you too, blah, blah, blah. And it's good. It's very, it's very nice to have. But um, what was I going to say? What I want to like talk about, not to drag away from it, is like with all this being said, all this knowledge you have and shit. Um, Because I, I give your discography a listen now and I listen to your stuff like throughout the week as well. Because, like since I've known you, like I've dabbled into what you drop and stuff because you share it on your story. But I'm not too familiar with like how much of this reflects into like your lyrics and not only lyrics, but just like, you know, the sound itself, because it, everything carries an aura and energy. So how much of kids with drugs music, like, or how much of your philosophy reflects into your music? Do you have any specific lyrics, specific, specific songs with messages that parallel to everything we just spoke about? Um, I feel like my newest song, uh, Samsara, uh, reflects all this stuff because i have parts where i'm like uh saying that uh i don't give a fuck if you're offended by my imagery you know like there's uh or like um there's other song i have it's called keep going and um here i'll find the lyrics and i'll just i'll just say read them out loud but um it's about to be a genius interview in this bitch (laughs) (laughs) go ahead perfect oh god bro but um damn all right here just keep going going through the motions i'm so bitter but it's so beautiful um i can see it that you don't need it you don't need it anymore um you don't need it being like that thing that like like makes you like like fend for yourself type feeling you know like the the ego like you don't need that shit like at all and let your guard down type shit is it yeah like like loosen your shit like everybody listening right now like do this as i say it loosen your shoulders drop your tongue from the roof of your mouth unclench your jaw unclench your jaw just relax bro breathe in even though right now my neck is killing me but you know Yo, facts because I've, I've fucking worked I, but... I, I sit under the camera so it has a good angle and like my neck is kind of like 
fuck it. You know, the sacrifices for the podcast. I'm always fucking, I'm a barista, bro. So I always have, I have to just, I'm always standing. Everyone, everyone stretch right now. Just really get it. But no, yeah, I was a cashier before because I had lost my job. I was working at a gas station and I was always on my fucking feet. And so like, I really appreciate (laughs) sitting right now and like just letting my fucking legs relax and all that. My body. Same. But, but yeah, music is so beautiful because, you know, it has so many messages you can spread. And after everything we spoke about, I'm like, holy shit, I got to ask him, like, how much of this is in his music? Because I glanced upon it and I took some of your lyrics and I know that most of them have like a vibe like this. But I'm like, I want to know specifically, like, share it with me, share it with us, you know, everyone listening. So that's really beautiful that it does reflect because, you know, they say that music um, shapes how you view the world, like what you what music you listen to. So if you're yeah. listening to a lot of negative stuff, like you might view the world a little more pessimistically, but with shit like this, you know, you might have an influence on people to where they view the world in a lot lighter or open sense, which is really cool. Yeah, exactly. And like, damn, I wish I could find like all the lyrics for all my all my words, all my songs, but like, dude there's like which 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 one of my songs what what songs of mine have you uh heard so far i listened to your whole discography but uh the one that stood stood out was the crystal worlds yeah oh i could find lyrics for that one let's talk about that one let's talk about crystal worlds you know me i like my crystals and shit like i got i got amethyst wings that's one of my songs i'm very much into the whole like uh vibe when it comes to like uh infusing it into the music yeah same and it's dude uh, yeah i try to be very spiritual with my music it's hmm i don't feel like a lot i don't feel like enough people talk about spirituality in their music i feel like i like talk about emotions fiji's music her music bro she's like one of she's like one of the few only people that really like i was like damn like her shit's like really deep when it comes to spirituality and what she's talking about and it inspired me to start mentioning wearing crystals on my chain and shit like that when it comes to my music and like bringing it you know to a broader horizon that's something that needs to become mainstream let's start talking about spirituality and music more let's get it can't find the lyrics to this fucking song but we're searching we're searching we're searching crystal crystal world crystal world uh all my lyrics are in my notes app and i don't label them by the song label i'll label them by some random shit and then i have to like really i have to click on each one till i find it that's that's what i'm doing right now (laughs) like in my notes app i have a song called andromedan and if you go to my notes app it does not say andromedan anywhere on the title it has like a ufo emoji i'm pretty sure (laughs) so it's like very misleading but uh no, yeah, take your time. Don't worry, no rush. Fucking, I might have to um, have another episode to record tomorrow. And but with what I use to put this shit on streaming, it gives me a limit depending on how much I pay monthly. So like, this episode will probably take up the last of what I have, and then like I have to wait till like later April to upload the next episode on streaming. Oh fuck! But it's fine. I'll still upload it on YouTube and Sound or SoundCloud in the meantime because that's where most people listen anyway. Yeah. Start Spotify. Okay. I found the lyrics. Let's go. All okay. right. So there's a devil. <laughs> there's a devil on my shoulder telling me I'll die soon. Nobody knows and nobody grows. It's like everyone's stuck on loop broken records a copy pasted youth the do, 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 do thing yep the slinky effect um but rest assured your soul is yours you don't need nobody telling you what's in store days go by you never really feel like walking out that door and my soul is screaming <laughs> look into my eyes and you'll find some demons look at my wrist and you'll see they're bleeding look into my mind and you'll see i'm free and lost in the smoke i'm barely breathing days go by and i haven't eaten all i know oh fuck i changed the lyrics there but uh, that's something that's a part i never used that shit that shit could stand alone as a poem like even Um, without like instrumental yo thank you and um uh yeah so basically like what i'm trying to say is like i'm trying i want to bring awareness to like weird 
we're doing the same things over and over again but we still have our souls we still have like our our own journeys and our own like like main character plots to like figure out you know and like instead of like focusing on this thing in the past like we could all just we could all and it doesn't even necessarily just have to be like music but like with any recurring like pattern in your life or like cycle like you could that has changed that shit because your soul is still yours you know like that's the part of in you inside of you that wants to do that other thing not not what has you tied down you know right and um you know you don't need nobody telling you what's in store you don't need people projecting that like image onto you because that's not you you are you you know right which we, um, we touched on earlier which is always a fucking great message because a lot of people get lost in how they're perceived and their expectations from others and shit like that parents partners friends teachers whatever the fuck boss employers so exactly and then for this next part where i'm talking about my soul is screaming this is more like um the the reality of who i am because i guess i preach all of these like peaceful things and i'm like oh my god yes be good and like you know peace and love but that's not the motherfucker i am like 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 what i feel like right now and like all this shit like I still go through very real things like every other human being, you know, like just because I have this like kind of like, like trying to be like the holy personality, like that doesn't mean I am perfect because I, I am very far from perfect and I, I don't think I'll ever reach that point. And I've accepted that I also know nothing, like everything that I could say right now, I could just be talking out of my ass, you know, but it's what I feel. I've you know? said, I've said all the same things and I feel you, but however, with that being said as well, is us having these experiences where we aren't perfect and we go through deep heavy shit and we feel deep heavy things i think gives us the most insight on what we what we preach and what we speak to others and shit because i think without that you wouldn't have the insight to really tell people how to like broaden their horizon in this lifetime and shit so it's all part of the human experience and the cycle you know it's like recycling it's like yeah taking taking in this like you know, taking this uh, negativity, taking any damage or whatever and turning it into something beautiful and positive and effective. And, and yeah, so that, so with Crystal World, I just wanted to like explain like, <laughs> like the, the positive message of it, but also the reality of things, you know, because like a, a Crystal World is, is, I got that title from smoking DMT and like, seeing this place that was literally just like a, like a crystal dimension like you ever like seen like the inside of the ice king's like like castle adventure thing? time like, yeah yeah exactly it looked like that and it was just like it was so pretty and like you know but like it, it equally as pretty like there was like some reflections that were like like beautiful shiny and there's other ones that were like portals and it's like dark ass like thoughts and shit you know but and so in like like to in a, to like sum it down into like like a smaller picture basically it'd be like yin and yang you know like um i just wanted this song to highlight what life is as a whole and it's crazy that i never really thought about this because like i whenever i write music i don't like have like a set goal of what i want it to sound like or like what i want to like talk about i just like talk about how i feel in the moment right and like I'm the same, I'm the same exact way. And it's not only even applicable to music, dude. My my tattoos are the same thing as well. It's like I'll same. get it. I'll get it. And it's like, oh, it's cool. You know, it applies to something in my lifetime, but then it also has like this like long-term message as well, like both the native and the fucking boxer that I have and shit. So oh, yeah. I have the sun and moon on my on my front forearm. Uh very I sick. Have- with purple dots because i feel like my soul color is purple and i have a seraphim angel with 333 on it as like a sign of encouragement and like hope that's so sick i fucking love that hell yeah i love that that shit's out of this world literally like that shit gives me like hmm. yeah it's like out of this world it's like it's not human it's fucking beyond us and it's dope that you have that on your skin forever yeah we're gonna be old as men looking sick as fuck dead ass and i have i i I would stand up and show you my ankle but like i recently tatted on myself my um 
my original character. I from, saw like, that. Yeah. That I was draw. I saw yeah. that. Very sweet. Very cool. I like it. I'm very happy about that. I'm really happy yeah. with how it came out too. Yeah, man. Tattooing is fucking dope. All I have experience wise with tattooing is I did a stick and poke on my thigh at the prime age of 16. And it's Same. like it's like a little fucking ghost. And it's it's I guess it's conventionally shitty, but I love it. So I have as in in high school, damn. That should make me sound like a simp, but I used to <laughs> I used to fuck with the 1975 heavily. Yeah. Uh, and um, so I got a, a rectangle tatted, like their their logo tatted on my above my knee, and on the other one I got a skateboard done. And is the skateboard is really fucking shitty, and I hate it. But the the rectangle, I I'll always love that one. That's just cool. Not even for the 1975. It's just good memories. Yeah, exactly. You know, it doesn't even have to be like what it could be perceived to be. But um, with that being said, everything we spoke about, we discussed music, we discussed art, we discussed all this fun stuff. And we discussed a lot, discussed a lot of philosophy, a lot of spirituality, a lot of emotions, a lot of shit that the everyday person probably doesn't converse about, which is good. You know, it's good to put that on a uh, platform of sorts even though we have a very small platform here on the Cult of Personality podcast. Blah, 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 blah. But, you know, it's growing ever more, and people will check this out and hear that, which is great, which oh, leads yeah. me to wrapping it up at this point, which is I wanted to ask, I forgot to ask this on the last episode. It was so embarrassing, but I'm going to remember this time. Kids with Drugs, what do we have coming up in the future in the next day, week, month, year, decade with anything? It could be work. It could be spirituality. It could be music, art, life, fucking moving out, moving in, anything of the sort. Let us know what's going on <laughs> with kids. With um, kids. So for the next unknown period of time, I will just be working on my art, music, I will, I'll, I'll probably post, like, not frequently, um, but I'll, I'll, po- I'll post when I feel like posting my music, because when I always like to post, like, when it, like, like, I reach a certain, like, moment in life where it's like, all right, this is when I got to post, but not, like, you know, so it's just, the moment has to feel right for music, but for art, I'll do that a lot more frequently, um, you know, I'm working on a couple of pieces right now. I have I have a photo shoot that I did, and I'll be releasing those pictures soon. And um, yeah, I made I made some art for that. Um, I'll do. Ta- I'm gonna be doing tattoos. So anybody from New York City, uh, you can hit me up. I'm doing pretty cheap tattoos because I'm trying to learn. So also be aware that I'm trying to learn. So you know. Yeah, but- man um shit i'd let you touch like my calf or my thigh or something like someone because like my legs is like that's experimental for both myself and like any other people who i know who are tattooing because i really only care about like my torso and arms and shit so fuck it if i'm in the city i'll let you know bro for sure make it happen i have i'll have pictures on my on my highlights so you can like check out my tattoo my tattoo work and my line skills so you could be like the judge for yourself to like you know but yeah hell yeah um always working on myself always work on yourself everyone listening you know we're always learning always should be um you know just love more have love more love in your life as mac miller once said all right mac miller but beautiful beautiful fucking unknown time period ahead of you and ahead of everyone in general (laughs) um (laughs) No, yeah, and fucking, dude, after this conversation, it's like, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm in the city often enough when I do come down. Right now, I've been I've been hermit mode upstate, but when the time comes and I'm back down there, I would definitely love to fucking, like, hang out and chill because you're a really cool, dope person. I, everything you've said, I've related to at one point or another, if not now, and I'm like, holy shit, I feel red. I feel understood. <laughs> so I think, I, this, so I think this episode was made or this episode was here for a reason and we were introduced for a reason so i definitely like that but thank you for sitting with me for this probably like two hours i think if not like hour and like heavy change um now this 
exactly two hours just right yeah. now. Thank you for sitting me for sitting with me for two hours. Thank you guys for listening for two hours. For real. Uh, if you listened all this way, you're a real one. Oh my god. A I very, a very, very real one. I feel like I had more to say. Maybe I don't, and that's okay. That However, is completely okay. Peace oh yeah. to everyone. Cult of Personality Podcast, fucking Mikey Monday morning. Uh, even though it's the afternoon when this gets posted, two o'clock. Uh, beautiful Mikey Mondays, Cult Personality Podcast, hosted by Mikey McChoppa. With me today was Kids with Drugs. All his stuff will be in the description, Instagram, anything else of the sorts. Because like the last three episodes I did, it was like Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, but whatever applies, you know, whatever your stuff is on. So you guys can check them out. Please check the description for all these episodes because that is where all their stuff is. And I put effort into them. I do these little cute paragraphs that hype them up. So I will hype you up and we'll, you know, it's good. Check the description. Anyway, Call to Personality Podcast hosted by Mike McChoppa with me was Kids With Drugs again. And thank you for joining. Have a good one. Love more. Love forever. Peace out. Always. Peace.